Hey guys, in this video I'll be teaching you exactly how the Australian superannuation scheme works and sharing the five highest performing funds over recent years. So let's get started by looking at the Australian superannuation scheme. Simply put, it is the main way that most people in Australia save for their retirement. Of course, this is mainly due to it being compulsory. Commonly just called super, it is a long-term investment that grows over time. The more you contribute during your working life, the more you'll have for your retirement. But how does super actually work? Well, it's a type of trust structure where your money is invested by professional fund managers in a range of assets. On the safer end of the spectrum, you have term deposits and bonds, and on the riskier side, you have real estate, stocks, or even private equity. The ratio between safer and riskier assets depends on the fund that you choose. Riskier funds will have a higher weighting, of course, towards riskier assets, while the relatively safer funds stick to the less risky asset. By taking on higher risk, those investors are of course expecting a higher return over the longer run. And today, over 3.5 trillion Australian dollars is invested in the superannuation funds. For most people, super begins when you start working. Your employer, by law, is required to contribute a minimum percentage of your income into super. Currently, this is a rate of 11%, but is increasing to 12% in 2025. You can also make voluntary contributions yourself on top of what your employer is already putting in. There are many ways for you to withdraw your super Super. The most obvious is once you turn 65 years of age, irrespective of whether you continue to work or not. There is another option called the preservation age which is the age from which you either retire or start transitioning to a retirement income stream. Depending on your date of birth, this can differ. There are also a range of medical, compassionate, hardship and incapacity grounds to withdraw your funds. And finally, you have the option of withdrawing a portion of your super for your first home purchase. There are a few rules around this though, so make sure you check those out. As Australia's population ages, the importance of superannuation continues to grow. It provides a safety net for individuals to have a comfortable retirement and reduces reliance on government-funded pensions. So, how do you choose a fund? Typically, you have the option to choose which fund you want your contributions to be paid into. There is a wide variety of funds to choose from, depending on your situation and preferences. Some of the factors to consider include the administration fees, insurance, member benefits, as well as the performance, of course. As we covered earlier, there are higher risk and higher potential return options, as well as the safer and generally lower return funds. There are broadly five types of funds that you can choose from. The first is industry funds, which were originally set up to cater to workers in a specific industry. Now, however, many of these have opened up, allowing anyone to join. The second is retail funds, which anyone can sign up for as they are offered by financial institutions like banks. Third is public sector funds, traditionally offered to anyone working for various levels of a Australian government, but now many are offered to anyone. Fourth is a corporate fund, which is offered by some of Australia's larger employers, like Qantas, to their employees. And finally, we have self-managed super funds, which require you to manage it yourself. Of the 24 million superannuation accounts in Australia, just over half are kept in industry funds. Retail funds account for about a quarter, and the public sector funds about a sixth. There can be many rules around which funds you can select, depending on your employment terms, so make sure you check those out, as some companies may limit your options. Once you decide on a fund, it isn't set in stone. You can always contact your provider to discuss your options to change funds or consolidate multiple super accounts into a single fund. Just make sure to watch the fees as some providers may charge these to change. Another consideration, which is less common these days, is the way your retirement benefit is determined. Accumulation funds are most common these days which allow you to build a nest egg over your working life. Your contributions are invested, and at the end, you not only get these back, but you also have the right to the investment returns. Where, of course, you go into higher risk funds, you then get a higher investment return, or at least you hope. Aside from accumulation funds, you also have defined benefit funds. While an accumulation fund relies on market performance to determine what you'll have to withdraw during retirement, a defined benefit scheme doesn't, as you're guaranteed an amount irrespective of market performance. Your benefit instead depends on your contributions how long you've worked with your employer, and your salary when you retire. These are much less common these days, as not many fund managers want to guarantee superannuation benefits to their members. So let's now jump into the top funds. Every year, Morningstar produce a report looking at the returns of Australia's superannuation funds. They managed to identify 404 options currently available in the market. The largest fund provider by number of members is Australian Super, with over 3.2 million Aussies investing with them. Australian Retirement Trust follows with 2.3 
3 million members, followed by Rest in third place with just over 2 million. Host Plus, Aware Super and Hester all have over a million members as well. Honourable mention also goes out to Uni Super and Public Sector Super Scheme, each with over 100 billion Australian dollars invested. We'll step through the returns by risk profile of each fund. Otherwise, we wouldn't have an apples to apples comparison. We'll start with the conservative funds and end with the aggressive ones. As you can see, as the risk profile increases, so too does the average returns. Looking at the one year returns, the conservative fund averaged just 3.6%, while the aggressive funds grew about five times faster at 12.3%. The same applies looking out to the average three and five year returns as well. Starting with the conservative funds, we have a bit of a mixed bag. From the eight funds, three stand out over the one, three, five, and 10 year returns. One path come out on top with average returns of 2.7% per annum over the past 10 years. Brighter Secure was the highest performer over the past three and five years, returning an annual 0.7 and 1.7% respectively. While over the past year, the Emergency Services and State Super Defensive Fund came out on top returning 5%. Overall, conservative funds are obviously pretty low returning, so let's move on. Make sure you watch right to the end as there was an aggressive fund that made a whopping 18.8% in the past year. Moving along to moderate funds, there are a few worthy of mention. Mine Super had two of the best performing funds over the one and three year terms, with their index defensive fund earning 10.4% over the past year and their life cycle fund earning an average 6.2% over the past three years. Looking out to the five years, the Australian Retirement Trust conservative fund came out on top. It returned members an annual 3.7%. It was also the second highest performer over the past 10 years and third over the past three years. Joining them was the Vision Conservative Fund, which generated the second highest returns over the past three years and third best over 10 years. Coming out on top over the past 10 years was the Telstra Conservative Fund generating members an average annual return of 4.8%. Looking at the fund composition, you can see these moderate funds have large amounts of safe assets, such as cash and fixed income. In this case, it's over half of the fund. Let's move along to some of the riskier funds. Looking at the balanced funds, coming out on top easily is the AIA SPS Balanced Fund, which generated the highest average 10-year return of 6.9%. It came out second highest for the one, three, and five-year returns as well, losing out to our other exceptional fund, the Host plus conservative balance fund. Over the past year, it made a massive return of 13.4%. 7.4% over the past three years, and 5.6% over the past five. As you can see here, the balanced funds are quite a jump from the moderate funds we looked at before. These funds are truly balanced between all asset classes. When we look at the Host Plus fund, roughly a third of it sits in cash and fixed income assets, another third in international and Australian stocks, while the remainder sits in real estate and more speculative asset classes such as private equity, emerging markets, and credit assets. The funds are getting more and more exciting, so let's keep going. Now we've reached the growth funds, which has the most options among all risk groups. Here I'll scan across all four pages, listing out your options, as there are many. Feel free to pause here if you want to see any of these in greater detail. Jumping back to the first page, the gargantuan Australian Super Balance Super Fund, with nearly $200 billion invested, was the top performer over the past 10 years. It generated an average annual return of 8%. Over the shorter one and three year periods, however, they seem to have lost their mojo compared to some of the newer funds. The Australian Retirement Trust's Lifestyle Balance Fund is an example, coming out on top over the past three years, generating 8.9% a year. It also came second over the past five years, slipping slightly behind the Host Plus Socially Responsible Balanced Fund, which had an annual return averaging 6.6%. Over the past one year, we are reintroduced to the Mine Funds, with their Balanced Fund generating a return of 13.5%. Looking at the fund composition, we now see an overweighting towards stocks. The Mine Fund, for example, invests 57% of its money in local and overseas stocks. Fixed income and cash investments sit down at roughly a quarter of the fund. So now we are up to aggressive funds. These are the funds that are hell bent on getting the best returns possible. There is a few of these as well, so as I go through here, please feel free to pause. The highest performing fund here over the past year is the Mine High Growth Super Fund, which earned a whopping 18.8%. This was followed by the REI Growth Super and the MLC Aggressive Funds. MLC has performed exceptionally with their super funds, as this same fund had the second highest three-year returns and came out first for the five and 10 
10-year average returns. Aside from Mine and MLC, Perpetual also topped the list for the three-year time horizon, with a return of 14.1%, well above the others. Going back to the MLC Aggressive Fund, their asset allocation is a very interesting one. They hold zero cash and fixed deposits, going all in on riskier assets, including stocks, property, private equity, and infrastructure. The biggest surprise in here, however, is their use of gearing, where they are actually buying assets on margin. That is, borrowing money to buy assets. The aggressive funds category is not for the faint of heart. These funds are designed for investors who are willing to take on a higher level of risk in search of greater returns, as you can see here. So that rounds out the video. Make sure to do your homework, ask the right questions, and I hope your super continues to outpace the benchmarks. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to subscribe down below. I post a lot of content in the personal finance and investing space. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to catching you on the next one. Cheers.